Uh, this is definitely my favorite part of the knife making processes. I basically have an infinite number of knives to sharpen. This is probably why I got into making knives. I just love to sharpen and see how the steel turns out. This is a piece of O1 tool steel. You know, I don't have a Rockwell hardness tester. I'm just trying to get these knives as hard as freaking possible, yet at the same time still be stable. So right now I'm just kind of, I'm trying to see where my grind is right now. I need to take a little bit more at the tip here. This is a cool knife. This is a O1 tool steel, like I said. I'm probably anywhere from 62 to 65 on the hardness on this guy. Really hard. You know, those double cryogenic treatments really help bring out a lot of potential to the steel. So you can see the bevel here. Yeah, we're getting that up there. You know, this stone probably isn't my favorite stone. This is a Naniwa professional stone. There's a reason why it's called a professional stone, though. It doesn't dish as fast. Now, I like this stone better. This is like the Latte Stone 400 grit. It just feels better, the feedback is gorgeous, but you spend about half your time also just flattening the stone. It dishes really, really quick. This stone doesn't dish as fast. You know, it's still gonna need some, you know, flattening. Let's see here if I do a little half-assed job flattening. You can see here on my stone, I've still got a deep gouge there. I'll wipe off. Yeah, right now I'm finishing up some 01 steel and some 52100. A lot of people wouldn't sharpen the knife until the very end, but I want to see what I'm working with. I have to see if it's worth putting a handle on or if it's no good. So for me, the, the sharpening process is a part of uh, evaluating the metallurgy. And man, I'm around sharp stuff all the time, so knock on wood, I usually don't cut myself. Yeah, let's finish this guy up. I like to see how the burr comes off. Is the burr stubborn? If the burr is super stubborn, that tells me something too. That lets me know if I've overheated the knife and I need to sharpen away burnt steel. Or maybe I got too much retained off tonight. I didn't get the full Martin Siddick conversion. So sharpening tells me a lot of stuff. So there's a lot of little details you can learn from, from sharpening. That's why sharpening is so important, man. Everybody needs to be sharpening your own knife. You need to... Everyone wants the world's greatest steel, but if you're not sharpening your own knife, you wouldn't even know it if you had it. You have to sharpen your stuff. So, for those of you out there that are on the fence about sharpening, you know, it's a no-brainer, man. Go do it. Just don't overcomplicate it, you know. Got the burr on there. I like this shape. This is about an eighth inch, like I was saying. Uh, it's a good skinner, I think. God, wouldn't that be cool if uh, Virtual Vice was using one of my knives to, on his channel? God, that'd be like my dream, you know? Let's clean that burr off. See if I can get it. Now, the burr comes off in a few different ways. It'll either come off. Thought I heard it right there. You can hear it, you can feel it. It'll either come off in one big strip or come off in fragments. I'm still trying to evaluate the meaning behind that, if it comes off in a strip or if it comes off in fragments. I know when it comes off in a big strip, it's very exciting. I enjoy that a lot. Saw something to show you guys. No. Yeah, it's just super light pressure. Some people are like, oh, it's just bearing down. Oh my god, you'll never get that burr off if you do that. You've got to go incredibly light pressure. This is a 400 grit stone, too, so it's harder to get the burr off completely. You got to feel the edge here, too. You got to feel if it feels a little rough, you know that that's little areas where you're. Your burr is, is poking out at you, you know, little frayed bits of metal. 
that needs to be cleaned up. So we could feel that here. It feels like it'll it cuts me right on here. That's good. You're not trying to cut through your fingers with that Murray Carter three finger edge test. You're just trying to see if it cuts you right away. And little cuts, little just the uh I'm saying cuts and that's freaking the shit out of people, but it's just you're just feeling the edge. You're just feeling right when it bites on that skin. You've got more nerve endings on your fingertips. But you have to go, you have to put your thumb on the back and just go light. And you gotta get a feel for it too over time. So this right now, this feels a little too convexed. We've also got a little bit of it's rough. And I've still got a little bit of burr on there towards the back here. So it's an important thing, but it's something that has to be built with, with you know, experience. you got to put effort into it. It's not something you can just read in a book and you can go do it. Just curious if we'll cut this thin paper towel material. Yeah, too rough. You can see how we're cutting through there. But again, we're at 400 grit. So it'll, it'll cut it, but mm, 400 grit's too rough. We'll bring it up to about 800 grit, and that'll be a better edge. But again, you know, we're not trying to do a final sharpening. I'm just trying to look at it, see where my bevel is. This is too thick for me to enjoy behind the edge. We want this bevel you can see right there. We want that to look like a micro bevel. Of course, this is probably, this is a safe side of knives. If I wanted to clean this up and ship this out to people, you know, a lot of people would be satisfied with this because it would be really, really durable, but we're not looking to make the ultimate durability in knives. We're looking to make knives that cut really, really good. So they'll be more delicate, but they'll sharpen better. You know, they'll cut better. It's all the cool stuff people want. And you're not going to get a lot of companies that will do that because they don't want to deal with the warranty issues as well as the fact that, you know, it costs more money. And, and it, it's difficult to get a knife very, very thin without burning it. Uh, without grinding too much from some areas, this and that. So it's easy to make thick knives like this, but we want to make them much, much thinner. Oh yeah. See, I got this guy to grind up now too. Yeah, we got a lot of knives to sharpen. You know, I like these mini trappers because I can just get the entire knife in one pass. I don't have to break it up in sections like I do with the kitchen knives. That just speeds up the process too. It's a lot of fun. You know, it it was a huge learning curve to learn how to grind these knives, man. Like, whew. you know, you see a lot of people they use jigs and stuff like that where they attach it in, and and you know that's that's fun I think because it's kind of brainless, but. I just, I got really bad ADD, so I, I wouldn't be able to sit there and take the time to clamp it in and do all the mathematics to angle it and stuff. I don't know, you just, you put it on there, you just grind it, you know. You should, everything should be done freehand. Even grinding the knife should be done freehand. I think some of the, the best knife grinders in the world are all freehand, too. They don't use jigs or anything like that. So once I saw that, I was like, oh, look at that. So I just need more. You know, I'll get more skill at it. I'd like to try a hollow grind in the future too. That'd be badass. I'm a huge fan of uh, Bob Loveless. I'd love to make a, you know, a Loveless tribute. Let's get that belly. Yeah, this is fun. You know, when you're a knife maker, dude, you get to sharpen all the knives you want. You know, it's badass. You know, I'm sure there'll be times where I'm just under pressure and I gotta do it. I gotta execute. And that, that, you know, that's never fun, but it's not like you don't have practice at it. Alright, see how that burr comes off. I think I got the 01 steel harder. It feels like it was just a little bit more. To grind, but I could be tricking myself because the 01 steel blade is actually a little bit thicker. My 52100 blades that we have right here are 330 seconds, and the 01 blade is about an eighth inch thickness on the spine. It's 
So yeah, we're probably about like 25 thousandths behind the edge on all these knives right here. So, you know, they'll be super tough, but man, we gotta drop that geometry to about 15 thousandths. I really like to get to 10 too, because 10 is just like, when you cut stuff, dude, it's like, just lasers through. Yeah, it seems like we get better deburring off the 5200 than the 01, but God, tough to say. I'll have to do some more testing here. Yeah, got to clean these grinds up. I'm going to thin these dives out a lot more. Get some handles on them. Man, I got a lot more blades to grind. Whew. <laughs> oh, man, I got my work cut out for me. But, man, you know, you only live once. You know, we'll all be, uh, unfortunately, we all don't live forever. So, <laughs> got to make use of your time. <laughs> all right, take it easy.